Okay, I was already uploading this video and now I'm adding new footage to the beginning. You're going to want to watch this video all the way through because my point is valid. A senator in Georgia just discovered military protected illegal aliens being illegally housed in the Atlanta airport and they're being shipped all over the United States. Why is your government doing this kind of shady business shipping these people all over the country in some big hurry while people wait for one side or the other side to fix the problem or vote it out or this, that, and the other thing. It's an invasion, and your government is facilitating it. This happens in history, and it's our turn. Watch this. After the video this week showing migrants sleeping in the Boston's Logan Airport, one Georgia state senator captures new video showing migrants inside a hidden room at the Atlanta airport. Watch. Yeah. yeah. Transporting anybody anywhere? Yeah, we're all getting in place to, to where they need to be. Yeah, so these are just uh, do recently documented travelers getting released from ICE, getting to where they need to be. Yeah, just let me, let me get a video if you don't. Yeah. Uh, actually, you cannot get a video. No. no. You cannot get a video. No, you're not allowed. You're not allowed. No. You're done. Did you hear the documented travelers joining us right now? Georgia State Senator Colton Moore. So I'm confused because I'm going to read this statement later on in, in the segment. But the person that you were speaking to said that they were documented and we know that they were illegal, right? Yeah, we, um, you know, we got a whistleblower uh, who gave us a tip about this hidden room and uh, I had a full team there with uh, some different cameras in different places. Said on Monday and Tuesday nights, there's just an influx of these people who come through the airport, kind of when the, uh, the traffic is much lower at the airport. Uh, they were in a hidden room. I was talking to an Atlanta Police Department investigator yesterday. There are absolutely no cameras in this area of the airport. Um, if you watch another part of the video, you'll see that there's some barricades and some caution tape before you get there. It kind of looks like a con construction zone, if you will. So can you explain to me, because, you know, airports are supposed to be one of the most secure locations. There's cameras everywhere. Is this inside of the terminals or outside of the terminals? This is, uh, I believe it's technically the third floor, but it appears as if it's the second floor in the domestic terminal. Uh, our whistleblower says they walk right out of the gates and then they're escorted into this room. Those people in that room, though, they were waiting to be booked to flights all across the United States. Uh, we were also getting video of migrants who were just walking out onto the streets of Atlanta. And who's guarding the door? So there was a U.S. Army soldier there at the door, the guy who says, you're done. Uh, he is a United States soldier. Uh, we, we still not sure exactly what his role was there, uh, but he was sitting right next to the door and uh, basically assaulted me in order to take the phone and try, you know, to get rid of the footage. Uh, I was able to recover the phone, and, and that's the footage you see there. This is crazy. What's going on here? I don't know. You know, there's a lot of questions to be answered. I hope the Georgia Senate will flex its subpoena authority and uh, start bringing some folks from the airport in and getting answers to these questions. Have you yet uh, been able to get in contact with Governor Kemp about this? I can't Im I can just imagine that he's not too happy about what's going on. I, I think this is the largest airport in the nation. Yeah, it is. It's the busiest airport in the world. Um, the Governor Kemp and I are at a lot of odds uh, on this issue uh, with with, uh, with the Fonnie Willis issue in Georgia. We haven't spoken. I know people in my district have sent him text messages. Uh, he's kind of passed the buck and said this is a federal issue. Uh, I certainly wish we were sending state resources down to the southwest border like Governor Ron DeSantis is. What do you want to see done right now when it comes to this airport? I want to see these people not be able to leave the airport. Uh, you know, the city of Atlanta controls the Atlanta airport. Uh, they ought to be housing these people here until we can figure out uh, things going forward. Well, Senator, Senator the, governor the governor comes, comes on our show. We, we hope that he'll come back and tell yeah, us exactly what he knows about this as well. Uh, I just want to read this statement uh, from Atlanta International Airport. This is what they said. ATL works with Libertad. Uh, volunteers to provide assistance to immigrants during their travel. Immigrants, I thought they were documented. Team Libertad is a nonprofit that has worked at ATL since 2020, and there are no military or other law enforcement agencies involved in this effort. Immigrants are never housed in the airport. Uh, State Senator, we're going to follow this. We appreciate you coming on this morning. So for those that don't understand, my last few videos have been a departure from my normal video content. 
because the crisis that's breaking out in America right now is unignorable. You can't just turn your head and act like everything's fine. If you've got a platform, you've got to try to reach out to people and show them what's really going on in America right now. And in this video, I'm going to show you what all of this is about. Trump, Abbott, Biden, the borders, the illegals, everything. And a lot of people aren't going to like what they hear, but it is what it is. So here we go. The, the Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum uh, has bragged uh, publicly about infiltrating governments and grooming political leaders. Now, you know, he's for the Great Reset, pushing forward Agenda 2030, complete globalization. Um, do you denounce the World Economic Forum, uh, Klaus Schwab, and the Great Reset? Listen, I'm, I'm not a globalist. I, I'm a Texas person, an America first person. Uh, but, but do you denounce Klaus Schwab and the Great Reset? I, I, I promote Texas and America. Okay, okay. All right. Thank hey. you, man. All right, guys, so as you can see, I just asked Texas Governor Greg Abbott if he would denounce uh, Klaus Schwab, the World Economic Forum, and the Great Reset, and he refused to do so. I mean, I don't understand why it's so difficult to just say, I denounce those things. Oh, I know why. Because it's almost gratis here, right? Thanks to Joe Biden. Thanks to the president. Thanks to the president. He's a president. He has a good heart. With millions of migrants coming to America, many migrants are being moved to the city of Denver, Colorado. The surprise influx of migrants has put the city into a crisis. Having racked up over $10 million in unpaid medical bills, and the city is projected to spend over $160 million to support migrants in the coming year. Migrants are receiving more benefits than American homeless citizens. So I'm left out here to just fend for myself. And all of these migrants love this one guy. We are here in Denver, Colorado, and right behind me are hotels that are being used to house illegal immigrants. And we have talked to a few, and they're getting months worth of free rent here. Ricky, T, what's going on here? In Denver, Colorado, we've learned that the population is 700,000, 40,000 migrants are living right here in Denver. ¿Cuánto tiempo llevan aquí? Yo, nosotros llegamos, yo por lo menos llegué el 18 de diciembre. ¿Pero han podido quedarse aquí en este hotel aquí? Aquí en el Comfort. ¿Y por cuánto tiempo pueden quedarse? Hasta el 13 de marzo nos están dando. Tres meses, básicamente. ¿Y le dan desayuno? Eh, nos dan eh, solamente el desayuno y la cena. No nos dan almuerzo ni nada. Los niños por lo menos no les gusta la comida. A mi, a mi hijo no le gusta la comida. Yeah, I mean, just look at this place. It's literally just like everyone just hanging out. They got cars. ¿Y este es su auto aquí? Eh, sí, él es, ese es mi auto. Oh, wow. ¿Y cómo podrían conseguir un auto? ¿Cómo podríamos conseguir? Uh -huh. eh, pues la verdad, eh, con mucho esfuerzo, hemos reunido para poder comprarnos el auto. ¿Y con papeles? Y eh, no. No, no so porque nosotros acá, el emigrante, pues eh, somos como que un poco complicados con los papeles y esas cosas. Pero pueden manejar sin papeles, sí, sí, sin sí. licencia. Sí, pues siempre y cuando con precaución, porque es que si, o sea, si no se maneja bien, pues tenemos problemas con la autoridad. No license, no problem, they will get. Where are you from? Iran. 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 Okay. I want to show you some new video that we have just gotten in of what's happening there on the ground. This is the aftermath of one of the strikes. The U.S. hit, we understand, 85 targets. You can actually see this uh, in the air. You can see the strikes on the ground uh, from this video here. And you can hear. And you can hear it as well as those... Uh, uh, on those impacts. U.S. hitting Iranian-backed militants uh, who were responsible for the drone attack in which three American soldiers were killed and dozens more were injured uh, in Jordan. Where are you from? Iran? 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 Okay. Like you can see, there's BP over there on their way to pick up more people. Mm -hmm. And uh, the situation... Is developing out here. Be sure to keep it locked. You just <laughs> Camera yeah, showing a group of people punching and kicking two NYPD officers in Times Square over the weekend. Now, law enforcement officials say that these men were migrants. These are supposed asylum seekers. And, and police say the border crisis beyond our own border. Yeah, cities like New York and Chicago are running out of resources with the number of people that are arriving there. And migrants are now looking at other cities that could potentially help. And one of them is Detroit, Michigan, where KGAN 9's Adam Klepp reports from outside a city shelter running out of room. New York
York's migrant crisis is now hurting the bank accounts of city workers that people rely on most. Well, questions being raised tonight about a new pilot program that'll give migrant families a reloadable prepaid credit card to buy food and baby supplies. All right, it would replace the food boxes given to asylum seekers staying in hotels. Live fucking here. And I've been here my whole fucking because I can yell. Because I can yell. Because I can yell. And I'm fucking angry. That's why. So why can't I get in the fucking building? Why? Where's the mirror at? Y'all, these fucking towns are fucking scared, yo. It's all about fucking money. It's a fucking money grab. Y'all give a fuck about the motherfuckers that was born and fucking raised here. I'm fucking homeless. I work a full-time job. 40 hours. And can't pay to live here. How the fuck are y'all gonna bring somebody else here? This is absolutely a death blow to this city and will continue to be a death blow to this city. Wrap your head, if we could, around $9.8 million a day for people who have crossed the border illegally. This is illegal. They did not come in the right way. These are illegal immigrants coming in that we, the hardworking people of this state, no matter where you come from, you're here legally. You're footing the bill. This is wrong. It's absolutely wrong. These people are being, they're allowed to fly illegally with no ID. When's the last time you got on an airplane? Did you enjoy going through TSA? These people can drive illegally with no driver's license. I've gone to jail for that. I literally did time for driving without a license because I did it so many times when I was a youth. It happens. These people are being housed in hotels all over the United States. They're being catered to left and right, and they're still complaining about the taste of the food. Their son doesn't like the free food that you're paying for. Well, here's the deal. This just isn't a, this isn't just a crisis. This isn't an influx of migrants. This is an invasion of illegals in the tens of millions. And I'm sad to say that voting isn't going to help. Donald Trump will never become president because there will be an event, something that'll keep Biden in office and allow this flood to continue. And let me explain to you who's behind it and why I showed that Governor Abbott is part of the World Economic Forum. Let's jump over to the World Economic Forum's website and see a video they put out a couple of years ago that so many people scoffed at and laughed at as a conspiracy theory. It's from the World Economic Forum's website and it's still there to this day. This is what they think, or this is what they're looking for. So as you can see, the World Economic Forum has had a plan the entire time. I can't let the original audio play because I already got a copy strike. So this is, I've been uploading this video for two days now. But you need to understand, all the governors, everybody that's in power, everybody that someone thinks is going to fix things, belong to the World Economic Forum, which belong to the one world government that they're trying to foist. In order to do that, they have to destabilize every single country, every single neighborhood, every place. And this is exactly how they're doing it, right in front of everybody's eyes. I don't know how they miss it. You see, people aren't going to like hearing this because it's happening and they hope that they can vote somebody else in and it'll change everything. 
They are literally flooding the United States city by city, state by state, and literally morally and financially bankrupting them. It's turning citizen against citizen, and it's making the entire place go straight down the tubes, and that's their complete and total plan. These guys want to start off a civil war. They've already stripped the country of everything of value. They already own everything of value. If you go through any American city right now, you see a Walgreens, a Walmart, a Dollar General, and some corporate gas station. Mom and pop shops are a thing of the past, and they can shut this entire system down with a simple hack of the electrical grid that they're always warning us about for the last two decades that is ready to go at any moment. But they never ever fix it. Do you ever wonder why? Because it's all part of an agenda. The goal is civil war. That's all there is to it. I don't know how else to explain it to you. These guys are all playing for the same team. And American citizens, our constitutional rights, etc. mean nothing to them. We live in a country where we have more drug addicts, homeless citizens, and homeless veterans. People that went and did the dirty deeds done dirt cheap for them, and as soon as they come home, they've got nothing. But if you don't belong in this country and you literally break in through our wide open borders in California, New Mexico, and Arizona, they put you on a bus, they give you a car, they give you a hotel room, they give you a prepaid credit card, and you're good to go. As long as you don't belong in this country, they take care of you. Why would that be? Think about it. The end result is civil war. That is what they want. And if you don't believe that, call your local insurance provider and ask them what the 2024 clauses that have been placed on your insurance for your homeowners, your health insurance, etc. You'll find out that they're pretty startling. I saw this a couple of months ago and wasn't sure if it was legit. So I talked to one of my family members who's been in the insurance industry for decades and she laughed at it until she called me back the next day and said, holy shit, this is real. Listen to this. This is something that made me go, hmm. As you may know, I have had my insurance license in the state of California for over a decade. And when I was a reviewing policies for 2024, I noticed this new exclusion. Look here, this is under exclusions and expenses not covered on a 2024 Cigna health policy. Treatment of an injury or a sickness which is due to war, declared or undeclared, riot or insurrection. This is not typical. This is an insurance policy from United last year for 2023. And the language typically reads like this. What happens with my coverage under extraordinary circumstances? And it says in cases of disaster, epidemic, war, riot, insurrection, that they will do their best to provide the services you need. But now take a look at United's 2024 health insurance policy, another exclusion, T, war. We do not cover an illness, treatment, or medical condition due to war declared or undeclared. Cigna and United aren't the only ones that have changed their language excluding war from their policies. Anthem has also done this. And it just makes you wonder why in the world would that be the case? Now, for those that are already rolling their eyes, I'm leaving links in the description box below so you can research all this for yourself. But here's the deal. Turn off your television. My entire point of going to the Texas-Mexican border was to completely and utterly expose the fact that the media is lying. Border Patrol, National Guard weren't having a standoff. Border Patrol wasn't being forced to not do their job. They were doing their jobs right on the other side, working alongside with the National Guard. The media lies to you constantly. And anytime somebody tries to shine light on this, they simply put up a fact check which I'm sure this video will have one below. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media The media is bought and paid for. I've been explaining this for years and nobody seems to care. And it's a problem because if Americans get their news or the information that causes them to react a certain way, they're getting it from a group that's bought and paid for just like the government officials that are bought and paid for. Do you ever notice how we always have a choice of voting between one billionaire and another billionaire? People that have nothing to do with us and that don't seem to have our best interests at heart. 
their main goal is to send all the money out of the country and then flood the country with people that don't belong here and then suddenly the laws of this country don't apply to them but they apply to you the Commonwealth will open a temporary shelter to help with the recent influx of migrants. The Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency will use a community center in Devons to house up to 60 families at a time. The state says a centralized space will allow a better assessment of the needs of the individuals. It will also allow communities more time to prepare for the arrival of families to their city or town. The site will open in early December and operate for at least four months. So have you noticed at the deadline, all these migrants are getting housing for three months, which brings them right to the springtime, right to the springtime, right when the movie Civil War is supposed to premiere. Do you see what I mean? And did you hear what she said? It'll help them better assess and give communities time to prepare for when these people are forced into your neighborhoods so they can leech off of all your resources. All the rules, the laws, the legislation, the red tape that's all put in place is to keep the agenda flowing while Americans look to their elected leaders to guide them out of this. But they're never going to. They're never, ever going to. Look at what is going on right now. Look at the national debt. I show this every time, but this is an astronomical figure that is actually unrepayable. And yet they're just sending all your tax money out of the country or giving it over to illegals by design. They're bringing the whole house of cards down from the inside, right in front of everybody's eyes. And while everybody's arguing with someone that believes in a different ideology, the same result is coming. The people that run things aren't stupid. They waited for all the Americans that actually understood the Constitution, understood what it was like to stand up for yourself. They waited for them to die off or where they're close to dying off because the new generation of people are too worried about their quote unquote mental health. When I was a kid, I had a really, really rough upbringing. I went to a therapist once and literally the guy had paperwork from Harvard University and he cried. So I never went back to a psychiatrist again. And I've done okay. But the kids these days, they're not going to fight any war. They're complete and utter pushovers. They don't even leave their houses. They stay in the house streaming and playing video games and chatting all day in different forums and whatnot. That's why you don't see kids going outside anymore. And when I talk about Civil War, it isn't simply because a movie that's never come out before about Civil War in America modern day is premiering this spring and really reflects society as it is right now. I'm looking at what our politicians are saying on social media and on the mainstream. I cry because every time I see that video, to see those pictures, I see my son. There is no safe place in America anymore. There is no church that's safe. There is no school that's safe. There's no shopping mall that's safe. There's no library that's safe. Not because of books. Not because of trans kids who want health care. But because of things that people own. The governor says that, that Texas has a right to self-defense. Sounds like a legit argument. Does the state not have that right, though? Yeah, so... It depends on what you mean by self-defense. And I think he's construing that simple term to mean that they can take on the, the powers of the national government. Women who have been impregnated by a rape, by a sexual assault. And if rape victims can follow the law, then Governor Abbott can too. Yes, that's Texas Representative Gene Wu, a Chinese-American lawyer who is now a state rep, state rep and his biggest concern is going on Twitter and antagonizing Americans. You see, all these illegals, they can do whatever they want. But if you are an American citizen and God forbid you speak up on the wrongdoing that's going on, you're instantly labeled, as Gene Wu says, a domestic terrorist. And as he says, fuck around and find out. He's just one of many, many that are in the system. You see what I'm saying? There's no voting these people away. You say anything, you're a racist, you're a homophobic, you're a transphobe, et cetera, so forth, and blah, blah, blah. Trans kids looking for free health care need to get parents. That's what parents do. 
When you're a little kid and you think, I'm a little boy or girl because I saw it on TV or I heard it in a song or I saw it on MTV or I saw it in a cartoon or the president talked about it because it's all they ever hear. That's when a parent comes in and says, yes, that's fine. Now go do your chores or act right. It's unbelievable what the priorities are. The priorities are to break America and they're just about done. It's right in front of your face. I shouldn't have to say this, but I am. But that's not all. President Biden also has some military speak for you in his own traditional way. And I love people who say, the blood of liberty, or excuse me, the, excuse me, the tree of liberty is water with the blood of patriots. Well, guess what, man? I didn't see a whole lot of patriots that are out there walking around making sure that we have these weapons. Well, and if you really want to worry about the government, you need an F-16. And the room that's literally filled with the government starts laughing like this. You need an F-16. You don't need an AR-15. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm serious when you think about it. I, I'm not joking. Because that's one of the arguments made by, right, that we need to be able to protect ourselves against the government. Well, look. Now, my point in this video was two things. I probably will lose my channel for this, but I don't care. Again, like I said in the last video, if there's no more country, I don't care about YouTube. You see what I mean? I've been doing this for 15 years. I've gotten over a billion views over the years. I've said my piece. And I actually stopped making videos when they took me down. But when this entire crisis showed up, along with all the military actions going, around on the going on around the world right now, currently at the same time, it's astonishing that they're allowing this to happen and people are still, I mean, sure, there was a convoy that showed up, but people sat down and protested. Protesting doesn't do anything. We're saying words, they're doing actions. They're flooding the country with people that don't belong here. Six, billion, six million, 10 million, who knows how many, and at least 10% of them are mules smuggling in drugs into the United States, which has already been decimated ever since the pandemic. Prices for everything have skyrocketed, making it we have more working homeless people in America than we ever had before. And now our government is forcibly shipping people that snuck into our country illegally. And if you notice that most of them that we can actually get on video are grown single men and they all seem pretty angry pretty angry and they're all from countries that we're currently bombing or in some sort of a kerfuffle one way or the other they're not going to close these borders this isn't going to stop this is going to continue to an absolute breaking point and the point of my video is be ready for it i've been warning about this for years and it seems in the last few years quote unquote conspiracy theories have been batting a thousand because everything we ever said was going to happen is happening at any rate share this video like this video if you want leave a comment below and i will reply i am out